I'm really glad to have you join us tonight. And Amber, I'm super delighted to have you join us. Uh, Amber approached us to see if uh, she could help and bring her expertise to Quincy. And I'm really uh, delighted and, and looking forward to tonight's program. Where we're going to learn more about different ways we can use technology, both grand technology and simple technologies, uh, to boost our mental health. These are challenging times. Thank you for showing up. So I'm going to talk to you about uh, this program, this unwieldy long program, because I don't know how to name things. Um, it is Boost Mental Wellness Using Tech. So uh, thank you for having me. And I'm going to jump right in because there's a lot. And there'll be Q&A at the end, a little bit of interaction, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what is this all about? So when I'm talking about uh, mental wellness and the internet, it's about two things. So there are two parts to this. One is mitigating your negative exposure to things. And the other is adding more positive things to your life when it comes to your relationship with tech. What is tech? By the way, I'm Amber P. Knight. Pleased to meet you. I should throw that in, even though my name is there still. It's nice to be formal. So what is tech? Now, when I was talking about technology, it's it can mean a lot of things. So I'm not talking about a robot that can sniff out bipolar disorder or um, some sort of uh, you know, microchip that can um, figure out anxiety and sniff it out or whatever. I'm talking about everyday things that um, in your life, so devices, social media, and the internet. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about tech. Can everybody see uh, it says boost mental wellness. Yep, we're looking good. Awesome. Sounds awesome. So, so that's what I'm talking about. So what I was saying in the beginning, mitigate the negative things and moving towards things that make it a more positive experience. What is tech? It's not these things. It is the internet, social media, and devices. So if you're here, then you have some exposure to that. So. I want to know if you can relate to one of these three things. Put it in the chat. Say, I relate. Don't put it yet. If you put it now, it means you weren't paying attention. So wait. Do you have a psychiatric diagnosis? Do you have mental stress? Or combination of one and two, are you supporting somebody who is in either of these uh, categories? Are you a support system for anybody like that? So put, I can relate in the chat. If that is you, if you can relate to any of those, you don't have to say which one. You do not have to say which one, but can you relate to that? If you can, then um, you're in the right place. I don't suppose, uh, and hit me up if anyone hits you up in the chat. So why am I qualified to talk about this? So one, ignore the builder. <laughs> That's the next slide. Ignore the builder right there. He's living his best life. Just leave him alone. So um, why people am I People can relate, Amber. What? I, I'm getting feedback that people can relate, so yes. Awesome. Yeah. Rocking. You're in the right place. So why am I qualified to talk about this? So one, I participate in the necessary distraction that is technology. I surf, surf the interweb. I use social media to a certain extent. Um, I'm a part of this. I'm doing something like this. So I'm a part of technology. I have lived experience with a psychiatric diagnosis. So I've navigated the mental wellness world and I'm continuing to use different coping mechanisms to help me on my journey. So uh, that is why I'm here. That's what brings me together because I started doing talks about my experience with mental health. And I realized that when I would talk about like um, being uh, in a stable place and overcoming a lot of things and being on a good track, a lot of the things that helped me had to do with technology. And I was like, hmm, I started incorporating it and I started to collect different things. And now I'm going to share some of them with you. So I have a ton of them. So I had to just, you know, cherry pick some things. So I'm going to give you just a slice of the things that I have, but I think that they can all be helpful. So I started off by, you know, telling you my diagnosis, but I'm a lot of other things. I'm a geek. I like things like Doctor Who, only the first 10 doctors. It's a thing. Um, I, you know, used to go to conventions and stuff. I'm an actress and a public speaker, and I happen to have bipolar disorder. Um, just a quick bit about my history. Um, I, the first time I went to the ER because of a psychiatric emergency, I went there, got back on my meds, saw my psychiatrist the next day, Bob's your uncle. 
The third, the second time I went, I got back on my meds, got a new med, went to an outpatient program and saw my psychiatrist. A okay. The third time the psychiatrist on call sat me down and said, this can't be the rest of your life. I think you should think about going to an inpatient hospitalization program. Um, just to kind of transition into having a stable, stable, safe place where you can get back on your meds. You can just kind of get your feet on the ground. And so for a very short time, I went to a psychiatric hospital. It was the best thing I've ever done, best uh, decision I ever made. And my life has been on an uptick since then. That was eight years ago now. And like I said, I've been using different mechanisms. Some of them have to do with tech, some of them don't. But, um, you know, it is what it is, and I'm glad to be here. So what's this dude about? <laughs> what's this dude about? So, um, Technology is not good or bad. I'm gonna, I said, you know, mitigate the negative and boost the positive, but technology is not good or bad. You can, it's like a hammer. You can use it to build a house. You can use it to build a prison. You can use it to hurt somebody or protect yourself. It just is what it is. So technology, social media, all those things that have some negative effects, they don't have to. This is not treatment. I need to say this loud and clear. When I talk about things, I'm gonna talk about coping mechanism, I'm gonna talk about all sorts of stuff. This isn't treatment. If, if there's something going on and you need help, get said help, but you're not gonna get it here. What you can leave with today are some tools that can help you, like I said, if you're in any three of those categories, I suggest you write them down. You can watch the replay as well. Write down the things that resonate and pick one that is not going to be stressful. So obviously one of just knowing the topic, and I said social media, social media and mental wellness, obviously just leaving, just shutting down all your accounts is an option. But if it sounds like that is, you would be so anxious and, you know, FOMO or just there's relationships that you've cultivated and that's the only way for you to, you know, be around certain people, then don't do it. Don't do something that is stressful. Just, you know, because some chick on the internet said to. So please, please, please just listen to some of the tips and tricks and, you know, hopefully it'll get you somewhere. Now, something else. All of this stuff is going to be out of date as soon as this is over. That's the, way the, that's the way technology works. What I'm going to talk about speaks to the possibilities, okay? So yes, you know, you go to the account and settings and you go to this tab and that tab to do different things I'm going to talk about. The how is not so important. It's just the process, speaking to the possibility. I'm only going to talk about Twitter today, not the other forms of social media because we only got so much time. So, um, but the things I talk about about Twitter, you can have some version of that in other social media. So this is not treatment. There are three things I want you to think about. One, evaluate. Um, whenever we talk about any of this stuff, evaluate your relationship with all technology and whatever we're talking about. And you're like, hey, is this making me feel good? Is this making me feel like crap? Whatever. Um, the other thing is uh, phase, uh, the phases are purge and weed. And I realized after I wrote this, I don't mean marijuana. <laughs> I mean, purge different, you know, relationships or whatever it is that you're dealing with on social, on, uh, on the internet with your devices, get rid of stuff and just weed out the things that work for you and then replace, put some positive things in their place. And what will those positive things be? We'll get there. Okay. So the first technology thing we're going to talk about will be video. So YouTube. Um, and any other streaming place, but we're going to talk about YouTube. So first thing is first, the internet will haunt you. If you look up something, that something is going to be with you for the rest of your natural life, unless you shut down all your accounts and start over. It's just the way it works. So cultivate a certain relationship with the internet and with YouTube. 
as soon as you sign in and you have your account up there, if you have at any time ever looked up baking recipes or like, oh, heaven forbid you put something like vegan or vegetarian or something for the next, for the rest of your natural life, it will think that you're trying to start an animal sanctuary and that, you know, you are trying to do every environmental thing that you get. It, it will, it's just how it's going to work. The more specialized your search is, the more specialized the opening page. And just to get it out there, I get that some people are like, I basically want to be off the grid. I don't want them tracking me and so on. But like I said, if you choose and opt into these different services, cultivate the relationship, okay? So if you put in baking because you love baking, baking things will show up. And if you put in vegan, there'll be less things about how to cook the perfect steak, it's just the way it works. So cultivate a positive relationship. Um, also, something that you can do is weed, when I was talking about purging weeding, weed out things that you don't like. So for example, you can erase, and I am not going to get into the actual technological points of anything else except for what I'm about to do. And that is how to, and it's only sort of showing you how to do it. If you, there are three things you can do. One, if you're not interested in a video that shows up, um, if you look at those three dots in the lower corner where it says how to be an achiever by Brian Tracy, I don't know why I'm getting that, but whatever. Well, I do know. Anyhow, press those three dots and this will show up. You can put that you're not interested in this video or you can put that you're not interested in that channel because for, like I said, it is going to follow you. It will always want you to go to David LaRoche world it's just going to think that that's what you're into. And if like me, you looked up Brian Tracy and public speaking once, <laughs> it's going to think that you're into this for the rest of your life. So um, I'm not interested in that anymore. So one of the things I can do is either not interested in this one video or I'm not interested in the entire channel. Something else you can do is delete your watch history. So if you looked up... Um, you know, like if you're into animals, but you hate the Tiger King, like me, um, I sometimes look up things about animals. And if I happen to want to look up something about tigers, um, and I accidentally get to something about Tiger King, I can delete that video. Um, if you want to go nuclear, you can just delete all of your, your um, watch history. And you can also delete your um, search history. So if, for example, you wanted to, because just morbid curiosity, there's something going on in the world and you want to find out about it a little bit, then what you can do is look something up and say, I don't want to know how to clear your search, your YouTube search history in 2020, um, because I, I wanted the search to be applicable to, to today. Um, if you're like, I don't want that to show up in my searches for the rest of my life. So I can delete just that one uh, video and cultivate the type of relationship being online as possible. Now, let's say you want to go into a deep dive into something like, what is this weird mole? I think I might have a tumor or whatever it is. And you're like, I don't want this to keep following me, but I am curious. Then you can just go into incognito mode on YouTube. But like I said, I know that privacy a thing. I know that there are people who are super uncomfortable with any, you know, corporation knowing anything about them. But if it's going to be there, I suggest that you not use incognito mode uh, when you're looking at things that you actually like, because it'll be annoying to look up hula hoops and have that follow you. But it's better that than something that is arbitrary or that you might not be into. Okay, something else. Have a funny playlist. I have my funny playlist. And I was like, oh, I'll show everybody one of my videos. No, a lot of them have swearing or it's people falling and stuff like that. And it's like, I'm absolutely not going to share them. But they make my world. I was watching some of them to prep for this. And I, I was like, they're still funny. But every now and then you need that. So make your own playlist of funny things, happy things, thing, motivational things, whatever it is. Because again, there are things that will help build your experience while you're online. Um, another thing about videos is Netflix. 
you have to retrain Netflix. Netflix thinks that I love people being murdered. It thinks that I like seeing fictional people murdered. It thinks I want to see real people get murdered. It thinks all sorts of, it just thinks that I am just so messed up because I love true crime. And uh, I am burned out. A true crime comedies, true crime drama, all that kind of stuff I was really into, but now it is too much. So it's haunting me. It's still so showing up in my searches, but I started to watch some things that are a little lighter that make more sense to me. And it's trained YouTube, trained YouTube, it's trained Netflix that I'm into different things and I'm starting to get different, um, different suggestions. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how you can erase anything from Netflix uh, like you can with YouTube. But again, you can just retrain it and just um, give thumbs up to things that are more in alignment with what you want to be like and give a thumbs down to things you don't want to uh, see anymore, like Tiger King. <sighs> People, it's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> okay. So what about being social on the internet? I'm not going to go into social media just yet, but in being creative and being social, one of the awesome things about the internet is finding your tribe. Um, and that's finding people who are into things that you are into. Um, and there are a lot of different ways um, that you can do this. Um, we're going to talk about a few of them. But one of the things I'll say, I know this is going to sound a little weird, but find a good neighborhood. What I mean by that is by a good neighborhood, I mean someplace that's positive, someplace that is constructive, because there are definitely different, like there are certain subreddits if you're into Reddit, there are certain hashtags on Twitter, there, you really have to weed out things that you are not into um, and just find some positive things. So one of the things I want to suggest uh, that was about the funny playlist, Netflix, meetup.com. I have been a fan of meetup.com for several years, for well over a decade. And what it is, is it's not, well, except for right now, it is not a place to meet people to hang out on the internet, except for right now. It is a place specifically to join groups to meet in the real world. And I love that. And so if you wanted to join, you can join right now and there are virtual events or you can just join now for when people meet up. But like I said, it is not like social media. It's called meetup.com for a reason. And it is, it has so many very granular things. So I'm going to read you a list of just five of the groups that are out there. So you can realize how granular these things are. So I'm not saying that you're going to be into these, but just so you can see the range. Um, New England Russian Outdoors Club, Dorchester Writers, Virtual Fitness Class, um, Boston Armazar Historical Swordplay and More, and the Boston Chapter of the American Singles Golf Association. So when I tell you, I'm pretty sure that there will be something for you. I mean, there will probably be something for you. Um, another thing that's out there. Oh, find a meetup. So I wanted to do an exercise. Let's see if this will work. You might be lounging. You might be driving. I don't know what y'all are doing. But I wanted you to right now think about a meetup that you would want to look for like what is it that i would love to is there a knitting one i'm into this or i've always wanted to that's a really good thing is finding a group of something you want to get into um so i want you to right now think about the type of group that you would like to do and then when we get to q a i'm going to give you a, a couple minutes and i want you to actually look up a group doesn't mean you have to join it but I just want you to see the power of this tool um, and just uh, to have something fun you can look at all right time trade circle this time trade circle is this really interesting funky idea and it is you know kind of a, a nicer neighborhood than say Craigslist um, and the thing it is is I call it better than barter and it's a group where you know, barter is like, I'm a public speaker, let's say you're a graphic designer, and I'm looking for a graphic designer. Now with barter, 
that would mean that the only way I can get help from you is if you wanted a public speaker. That is a kind of random thing for somebody to want. <laughs> So, um, so what happens with time trade circle is let's say I do five hours of public speaking. Let's say there's an organization because sometimes there's organizations that are there and uh, they have me do five hours worth of something like this, let's say, then that means I have five hours that I can spend for like a graphic designer and if that graphic designer needs somebody to build a website then they can find someone on the site and use those five hours that I paid them to do something um, as a caveat I mean it's like Craigslist or anything like I said it's very positive it's very hippy dippy just to warn you it's very hippy dippy but it's still the internet you don't know these people so if you want to like get yoga instruction in person or something and you want to go to somebody's house or have them come to your house I mean you're taking a chance with anything on the internet but it's one of the nicer places that I found on the internet and I've done things there I've gotten things there talk to me for more than three minutes and I will try to get you to listen to podcasts and more than five minutes, I will try to get you to start a podcast. I love podcasts. So just um, a quick story about that. Um, my cousin, um, like a decade ago, um, served in Iraq and he did a couple tours there. And this was before smartphones, but there was iPods and I got him into podcasts. And back then you couldn't like stream things. You had to hook up your iPod to your computer to have things downloaded. So before he was deployed, I got him to fill up that iPod with all these episodes of podcasts with, you know, some of those podcasts, you know, have like over a hundred episodes. And so he just built up a lot. And when he came home, we had all these inside jokes. We went to events for that when it came to town for the podcast. And we just had all these things to, bo to bond about. Podcasting is a very fun thing. And just like meetup.com, there are so many types of podcasts. That's another thing we're going to do during the Q&A. I want you to find a podcast. Not yet. I want you to think of something you're into, maybe the same thing that you're into for Meetup, and I want you to find one or two podcasts. Doesn't mean you'll listen to them. It does mean that it's um, just to speak to the possibilities. <laughs> What is a podcast, you might be asking? Technically, I'll give you the technical meaning. It is a episodic audio or video um, subscribable um, media. So if you were to just put up an audio file on your website, that's not a podcast. A podcast, you have a directory and you look things up. Um, so iTunes has a, is very popular. Um, there's another one called Stitcher and Google Podcast. So between those three, you can get them on any type of device. And if you want to look it up on the internet, what you would search is podcast directory. So you can look that up, but these are three very popular ones. And the power of podcasting is it's, it's so um, intimate. You know what I mean? There's a lot of, there's no gatekeepers, so it's a lot more personal. In the same way that YouTube is more personal than mass media, podcasting is more personal than um, the radio or, you know, other things like that. And there's just so many niche things. It's a cottage industry. Um, I highly recommend if you're into audiobooks, if you're into the radio, if you're into anything like that, then podcasting can be a very positive experience. So, when I was waiting to go to the hospital, um, when I was um, hospitalized, I was on a gurney, curled up in the fetal position, waiting to be taken in the ambulance from the ER. And um, I had my earbuds in and I was listening to a podcast while I waited because it was familiar. It was, uh, you know, I had something that was soothing and that's something about different things with the internet, like internet, like with some people, it's music. For me, podcasts was something that was important. And like I said, there are different communities that are built around them. And something that's interesting, just so you know, if for some reason 
<laughs> Hopefully you will never go to a psychiatric hospital, but let me tell you, um, unless you need to. Um, so you go there and obviously, you know, it's been, a, you, you haven't had a good day if you have to go to a psychiatric hospital, right? Turns out that um, as soon as you are discharged, um, funds, are, funds are low and you are taking the tea home if you don't have a ride. So 24 hours before, um, I could only go outside for an hour a day after I earned the right um, and, you know, had to get checked in on every 15 minutes. They go around with a clipboard. You're in the bathroom, knock, 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 you in there? Yep. In the middle of the night, peeking in, make sure you're okay. But 24 hours later, you're on the red line. So what was I listening to when I took a shuttle to a bus, to a train, to a bus to get home? I was listening to a podcast. And it, it was one of the, it wasn't like one of the ones that's a superstar. It was, you know, I remember, I don't remember the episode, but I remember the show and it was making me laugh. And it's just a very popular, it's a very popular, well, it's getting popular now, but it's a very, um, I cannot go on more about podcasts because I love them so much. Um, something you can do with YouTube like and with podcasts is curating a list. So making a list of things that are um, like your, um, your funny podcasts and your um, political podcast and your this and that and having these different things. And like I said, evaluate, purge, and whatever the third one was, I forget, but... <laughs> But um, I had to purge my true crime podcast because I was overloading on it and I had to let some of, some of them go, most of them go, except for the comedy ones. I know it seems like a contradiction, but it works. Um, and, and you got to do that sometimes. Um, okay. Uh, I will take a breath and see, is there anything that uh, I should know, Clayton? No, I, I know that one of our participants is driving, so his ability to, to comment by chat uh, is challenged. But, hey, friends. Uh, Drive safe. I know. I, I would certainly be interested in, I'm excited to do the exercise later where people look and, and explore what podcasts are interesting to them. Mm -hmm. um, I've been listening to podcasts uh, for a number of years. I do it a lot more when I'm driving. Um, yeah. cause they're nice to listen to in a company as I'm going around or if I say, you know, when I'm taking public transportation, they're great for that. Um, I find it as I've been quarantined at home, I listen to a lot less cause it's just, I'm not putting in, um, I just don't have, to, I don't know. It's, it's interesting to think about how to create that space in my life. But, yeah. uh, I also find there's like, I was actually just listening to a podcast with my son, uh, yesterday and we were appreciating like there's something about a really nicely produced podcast with just the way that they, like we were listening to the New York times magazine podcast. Um, and their, their 16 was their 16, 19 series, um, which is some intense storytelling. And they just think about every detail and it's so immersive. And like he, we were, we were doing this, we were weeding is what we were doing. And um, we really, his comment, which I thought was really uh, well put was that when you, if you're listening just to music while you're doing some things, you're very conscious of how much time is going by. And if you have to do something menial um, music, I don't know, I tend to groove and just chill the music a lot too. But uh, he found that by putting on a podcast, the hours just like he, he could just focus on weeding and get it done. And the time just flew by, which is really nice and kind of was able to do something while occupying his brain. So there you go. Yeah. See? I'd love to talk about people. I'd love to hear about people's favorite podcasts. There's not my biggest challenge. There's not enough hours in the day for my queue. I've always got like way more podcasts than there are hours to listen to them. I'm not going to say how many I'm subscribed to. <laughs> yes. I th yes, I do understand. But that's good. It's um, good to have options. Exactly. And I've weeded things out. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about some low tech things. Now this can either be for you or you want to help somebody out. So some of these, I, the, I got the idea because of church people. I am not a church people at all, but my mother is. And I was curious, you know, um, I used to go to church and I was curious, like she, she stays home and um, she doesn't go to church. She, she watches it live. And um, one of the things I was wondering about, I was like, I, I remember when I went there that, you know, sister so-and-so uh, couldn't come in very often. And definitely now, you know, she's elderly, so she's not going to come in. So what does she do? And it got me thinking, you know, 
what is it, necessity is the mother of invention. So I got to thinking about some ideas and just about low tech things. So one is, you know, get creative, um, a burner phone. <laughs> She might not have a TV. I mean, not a TV. She might not have a smartphone. She might even have a computer. But uh, a burner phone, they, they can be, you know, I've never had to buy one, but just in case. Uh, if you don't know what a burner phone is, that's what they call it in the underworld, I guess. I, I heard about it on those cop shows and stuff like that when, you know, the, the bad guy has to get a phone so that it isn't traceable. But it can also be an affordable way to help somebody who needs some access to technology. If you have an old MP3 player, you can load it up with stuff um, and share that. Um, and it's the good things about these is that they can be, you can load up more things and you can uh, teach, give, download some apps for the person and just give people some more options now this this is not a sponsored post but i am a fan of kindles kindle fire which is a form of tablet and it is very low tech um, amazon has very good customer service with it it's pretty easy to use i'm a fan of alexa again if you're really into privacy and stuff like that and you're like i don't want something that's going to be listening to me then fair enough but um i like it and i know that there are some specific phones and some specific uh, computers and tablets to help people who are maybe more low tech but the kindle is, is something that i have i like that you can read books on it um and it makes the books into audiobooks you can do text to speech um, so if you get something from the library you can uh, you can read it or have it read to you um, on there so it's a really cool um, resource that I am a fan of and it's not very expensive um, something that you can again that's low tech but a way technology can help you is if you are in a 12-step program if you're a part of a fellowship there are phone meetings and I don't mean like this like Zoom and, you know, those different webinar things, you can actually just call an actual meeting. Um, you just need access to any type of phone. So it's, and this was before um, all this stuff happened, there was always that option. So it's good to know that there are things, that there are ways that you can use low tech options to still uh, be in community with different people in different places. Um, libraries. Um, sorry, I shook the table. Um, libraries are such, and I know, I am not, you know, I would have, I would say this no matter where I'm speaking. I'm a big fan of libraries. I grew up in a library. My mom was a librarian. I love libraries. And they have evolved with the times. That is not the same thing with a lot of industries, but libraries have changed with the time. They've become an amazing resource. If you are not very technological, libraries can help you with that. Um, they are very much staying on, on the pulse of what's going on with technology. And there are different resources. Um, um, so if you are a library person, uh, technology is at your fingertip. Even if you are not uh, have options at home, there are things that you can use um, in your local library, uh, like the one that is sponsoring this amazing event today. I don't know why I put on my radio voice for that. You are, you are, <laughs> I'm trying to think of something to say. You are at the Boost Mental Wellness Using Tech Program. I love it. I can do voiceover. I know. I used to have a podcast. I've had like four podcasts. Literally, I've done four podcasts moving along. Um, uh, so, yeah. And then some other low tech things, just two, you know, just one really quick thing turn off the beep on your microwave. And I know that that sounds so random. Um, it's not like a stove. If it stops and you, it, you don't get there for an extra couple minutes, that's okay. It's one less thing. You know, and I, it's less obvious than like put your phone on vibrate or put your phone off or something like that. But it's the little things about technology, the beeps and borps that happen all the time. Uh, it's something to think about. Okay, finally, social media. I'm going to talk about Twitter today. Um, and I know there's a lot of stuff out there, but <laughs> have mercy, there's so much. Okay. 
find a podcast. We will do that later. Um, a quick thing about Google and other services. You can search in incognito mode. Um, if there's something, like I said, if you want to look up something private or something, uh, that, a lot of reason why people do incognito mode is for privacy, but you can also use it if you don't want something, like I said, if you want to look up some sort of sickness you think you might have or some sort of political thing that you just don't want in your feed all the time, then you can train the internet. Um, something that's um, kind of cool um, is being kind to yourself when it comes to what you, like I said, purge and evaluate and all that stuff. Um, I remember I had a fitness app and I had it on the front screen of my phone because I wanted to remind myself to be Miss Fitness. Um, and I wasn't using it and I just felt guilty every time I looked at it. So what did I do? I got rid of it. Okay, first I moved it to the second screen and then I just deleted it. Because again, like I said, going nuclear every time with everything is not necessarily the answer. So I had to really evaluate what my relationship was with that app. And I know it's like, really, girl, you are, go you are doing the most. But really, it's something worth thinking about. Like if every time you look at your phone, you're like, I should be running. I should be doing yoga. I should be drinking more water. It's going to add up. Little things add up. So I highly suggest that you do that. Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> Let's just jump in because so some of the obvious things you can do. You can block people. And uh, that can be trolls. That could be your cousin. You can just block people. Now, some other things that people don't necessarily know about or can use a reminder for. You can mute a topic. Listen. All of the stuff I'm about to say is private to you. That's why I'm not showing you a screenshot of my, you know, of, of my Twitter, which I rarely use right about now because it's too much. I practice what I preach. I, I rarely on Twitter, I go in there if I need to look up something from a person or a group or whatever that I need to see. Otherwise, I'm not on Twitter right now. I just can't deal with it. So um, you can mute a topic. And it, the way I, reason I say it's private is because if you're, say, religious, and you put in the name of your religion under muted topics, if somebody found that out, you could get judgment for that. And I want to recognize that. And I understand that. But maybe you don't want to deal with infighting, seeing things about infighting or seeing in things about criticism. There, it's just not something you can tolerate at that moment. You can mute topics. You can mute hashtags. And you can mute people. If you mute a person, they will never know. Okay? It is it's so helpful for your mental wellness to be surrounded by, like I said, mitigating the negative, supporting the positive. Um, you can have different, not playlists, uh, different lists. So you can have one called happy. And maybe that's, you know, comedians you follow or just quirky personalities or positive people in your life. You can have one that's for business because that's one of the things, that's one of the arguments that people have. It's like, I need it for work. I need it for school. I need it for whatever. You can make a list. And just when you're signed into Twitter in every day, if that's the thing you want to do, you can just go to one of your lists and say, I need to keep track of my clients or whatever it is and do it via list. Um, something to really evaluate is, um, do you need it? Do you need it? You know what I mean? And there's no, I, I've kept it uh, for now. Um, there's no judgment either way. I don't think that it's fair. Like I said at the beginning, I don't think it's fair to say to somebody that, you know, all social media is bad. Or even if you're having a bad experience with social media, I don't think that the guilt of saying it's something that you should do is fair. That's why I do something like this, because there are options. There are way of ways around things. And like I said, don't have any shame in blocking something, or if you just can't handle that for social reasons, you can always mute somebody. Amber, I have a question about muting. Go for it. If you, um, if you mute somebody and they comment on like, there's, you know, if you're looking at comments on a, you know, you know, on a, in a stream, will you see their comments if they're part of a conversation or? Yes, I they... believe so. It's just their posts. Okay. So just their original posts. Yes. That could be a, a lie from the devil, but I'm pretty sure that okay. you, you just get blocked from that. I there mean, there might be times when you want to see their contributions to a conversation, but you yeah. don't want to see their originals spewing. So, Exa yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, 
yeah, just evaluate how much you need it and how much you don't. Now, we need to talk about subtweets for a second. I don't know if people know what subtweets are, but they're subliminal tweets. I don't even, I technically don't think that that necessarily makes sense when I explain it, but you'll understand. So let's say, let's say, I don't know, you go to somebody's party and you bring a bottle of wine and why am I, what is it with me? I don't even drink, but I can't think of another example because I know somebody this happened to. Let's say you bring a bottle of wine to somebody's party, they don't open it and you take it back with you. And then you go on social media later and you hear, I just find it funny how some people will give you a gift and make it seem like they're being generous and then they stop. Or maybe they just decide that they need to keep the gift for themselves. That was obviously for you. <laughs> that is a subliminal tweet that you should have figured out. So something that is a consequence that you should know, unfortunately, is that there are going to be people who are like, I just find it funny how some people aren't talking about this and that, but they can talk about a volleyball league that they want to start. Why is that important when there's this and that going on in the world? It's just something that can happen. And I just want to bring it up because, you know, I, I have all this stuff. And I think that now is a good time to talk about an elephant in the room because I'm like, be happy on the internet. <laughs> And we're like on the brink of a second civil rights movement and just all sorts of stuff going on. And so I just really want to acknowledge that you will either be <clears throat> not able to escape certain things or you don't want to. But here's the thing. You have the right to choose your exposure. Okay, so if you cannot deal with something, your wellness is more important. I don't owe anybody trauma bonding. I don't owe anybody my attention. Um, that's just how it works. And I highly, you could be, but you could also be washing, out, you could be squinting, looking at the screen because you just washed pepper spray out of your eyes. Like I recognize that that you could be on the front lines. You deserve wellness, okay? Take time for you so you can fight another day, okay? My line is, I don't owe you me. I don't. I don't owe it to you to be about anything or not about anything. It's just you don't need permission from a movement to take care of yourself, to use uh, self-care. Now, that said... Maybe you're on the front lines, maybe you're an advocate, maybe you're this, that, whatever. When it comes to anything, not just what's going on in the world now, with whatever comes up next, here's a tip, trick, hack, whatever. Go to the source. What do I mean by that? You will be sucked into an echo chamber if you watch the news. Uh, you will hear it from somebody else's opinion, some producer's opinion about things. It'll be, even if it's somebody you love, trust, and adore, you're still getting somebody else's opinion. So this is something that won't cause you any, cost you anything but time. Okay, when we get there, it's like, well, there might be a fee for some of this, but go to the source. If there's a news conference, watch the news conference, not news coverage that only gives you sound bites. Um, Look up the Freedom of Information Act. Um, find court records. A lot of them are free. Some of them are online. You don't have to, if you need to be in the know, then know on your own terms. That's what all of this that I'm talking about, it's doing things on your own terms. I call it strategic avoidance. <laughs> you need to know things for a season and a reason. And um, just, just live your life on your own terms. All right. So block, mute topics, mute people, mute hashtags, list, um, oh, we'll get there, um, list uh, on Twitter. So I got the elephant in the room out of the way. Okay, so that's the social media I'm going to talk about. We have 10 minutes left. I want to talk to you about, um, now that I've tricked you into coming to something about tech, I'm going to talk about some stuff offline. Uh, so first of all, if you are in crisis, Call 911. 
Go to the emergency room. If you have an emergency action plan with your providers, if you are, you know, seeing a some sort of doctor or something for psychiatric reasons or stress reasons or whatever, do that. Don't go, hey, that chick from the internet, Amber P. Knight, that chick from the internet, she said something about I should try, you know, listening to a podcast that made her feel comfortable on the way to hospital. Ooh, don't. Don't be that person. Get the help you need. It is too important. Don't dilly-dally. Now, I want to give you some resources. I should have had them come up one at a time so you're not distracted, so deal with it. So NAMI, N-A-M-I. NAMI Mass is the one for Massachusetts. NAMI is an amazing organization. I'm not, um, you know, an employee or anything like that, but I absolutely adore them. And they have tons of resources. Um, if you're dealing with some sort of psychiatric emergency, um, before you are in that emergency, check out this website, uh, AMI, AMI, focus, namimass.org forward slash in a crisis. Do it now. Do not wait until you're, um, don't wait until you're in some sort of emergency. Um, so check them out. They also have something called the, Comp the Compass Help line. It's not a hotline. It's not Good Samaritans. It's not some suicide prevention, crisis prevention. You do not call them in an emergency. In fact, they only are open during like office hours and stuff like that. They are there as a helpline. If you need help, uh, if you have a diagnosis or you're dealing with some sort of mental health issue, they can let you know about different resources with different working with what you're working with. If you have legal issues, education issues, employment issues, all support groups um they have so much information they also have something i didn't put it there but if you look on their website they have something about technical resources if you're having issues with covid they oh i said it Ooh. um they have a, a page about that um so go to namimass.org i highly recommend them look at the crisis thing when you're not in crisis i cannot emphasize that enough um so that you will know some of the options there so i'm going to leave that on the screen for a little while and uh we are going to talk about um we can jump into the q a's early um i don't want to get into another topic and like have to get cut off and i want to have time for us to chit chat Except for the person on the, in the car, hey, pay attention. So, no, I want to keep sharing. Okay, so uh, Q and A, and also I want us to do the homework assignment of Meetup and uh, Meetup.com and a podcast. So, let's do Q and A first. If there are any cues that I can a. All right, this is a great time if people want to put something in the chat uh, to let us know. Or in fact, I think I will, since we are an intimate crowd, I will go ahead and give people the option to unmute themselves. So you can do that if you'd like to talk to us. Uh, you can certainly chime in. I'll keep the spotlight on Amber so you don't need to be worried about uh, having the, the camera that we're, since we're recording this turn to you. Um, but yeah. Greetings, what kind of questions do you have? Oh, I just, I think I just have a comment and uh, that is, uh, I'm probably the lowest tech person uh, that you've met. And, uh, uh, but this, so this has been very interesting to me because uh, no one really would t ever sit down and talk to me about these things because you're just supposed to know this already. Uh, I've never, I've never uh, had a Twitter thing. Uh, I've never had a Kindle. Um, I only have a, a, a landline phone, and uh, but somehow I'm on here tonight, <laughs> and, I found, and I found the unmute thing. So, uh, so uh, this was this was good because it it came in at a level where I can pick this up. I'm taking a lot of notes because I know I'll have to go back over it, but um, I, I find this interesting, and I'm I'm wondering. Uh, I'll tell you something that I do, and you tell me what you think about this. Um, because I'm not a tech person, I listen to NPR, and I listen to, I get from the library, I get uh, audio cassettes, I play them on a CD, and I do those awful menial things like dishes and clear the, the 
kitchen counter, clean up the bathroom. Uh, so is that something, a podcast, you watch it, right? Uh, there are some video, most of them are audio. The vast majority are audio. Ah, so, okay. So if I did, so I can expand. I mean, there are lots and lots of choices at the library to mm -hmm. uh, listen to uh, audio CDs. There's all kinds of books, but I could listen to some other things on podcasts probably. We're going to play, you and I are going to play. What is something you like? Okay, out of the whole world? Yeah, like what are you into? What's something fun you like doing? Oh. You might even enjoy uh, checking out, I know NPR does a lot of podcasts, so you yes. can even think, yes. what's yes. that yes. show on NPR you're always waiting to come around, but you never tune in at the right time. Right. Yeah. Right. That's that happens often. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And I do listen to those. Oh, I like uh, I like some uh, human interest things. Uh, now, unlike you, I do the murder mysteries. <laughs> I do those on CDs. Uh, tonight on uh, on uh, PBS is Midsummer Murders. That's one of my love it. <laughs> yep, love yep. it. Um, but what I what I would. Uh, I'm interested in a lot of history stuff, and I'm just recently getting more into genealogy uh, for my family. Uh, we've been, my sisters and I have been doing this during the stay-at-home time, uh, back and forth with each other. Do you know the dates of such and such? Did Grandma go over this? When did she do that? And uh, so we've been doing that. Um, other things I have an interest in, but I can't imagine a podcast You'd be surprised. <laughs> hit me, hit me. Uh, I like to do a little bit of kayaking. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some pod, but sometimes, uh, sometimes a family member tells me about a podcast and I almost always like them. Um, oh, I did the, uh, oh, the woman who does, you talk about purging and clean, she's the one who talks about your happiness place and your full, how to fold everything up and make yeah, it. Yeah, Marie Kondo. Yeah, yeah. I watched some of that, her podcast, and uh, I enjoyed that. So, um, actually, now I can't think of any other things. So, how do you spell kayak? How oh, that it's, it's, it's easy because I finally learned it today. <laughs> Just, you can spell it backwards and forwards the same way. K-A-Y-A-K. Oh. -A -A I signed it. I uh, learned it today because I got an email from the recreation department. My friend, see Kayak Podcast, Yak Legion, uh, Kayak Hipster, Expedition, Expedition Kayaks. That's that's just a few. I didn't even hit um, see all. When I say there's a podcast for everything, I you mean there's a podcast for everything. And I want to give you a recommendation of a history one by a local podcaster. Um, it's called Ben Franklin's World. Um, Liz Covert is the one. You just need to know Ben Franklin's World. To you don't need to know her, um, her name. But uh, it's done by a local podcaster called Liz Covert. Um, I am not a history person per se. Um, I'm, I've been very into Ice Road Truckers and Forged in Fire on the History Channel recently, but um, she's, she's pretty rad and she puts a lot of work into that show. Um, so if you're into that type of history, it's something worth looking up. Yes. So, so, so yeah, so, so that, so we got you uh, um, a lead on like five podcasts. <laughs> One in history, four in kayaking. Um, and I love that you can, brought that up because I just, uh, I'm also, I also enjoy kayaking. Mm -hmm. And I just found Paddling Adventures Radio has put out 227 episodes. So there's like a deep paddling like podcast world to go into here. Wow. Uh, they're like, you know, everything. They're going into the backcountry in Ontario. There's like some coffee taste testing, which is like, oh yeah, I'd love to talk about, you know, some coffee and kayaking. Why not? <laughs> Both those things. Um, okay. Yeah, so there's definitely, yeah, that, that's, I never thought to look for a kayaking podcast. I got a bunch of other things I listen to, so that's mm -hmm. very cool. Okay. So, yes. What else, Rita? Were you, the, you were saying stuff. Oh, okay. Let's see. What else do uh, we talked about? Uh, see, I've never, uh, I've seen, I've seen Twitter, but I wasn't sure 
Um, what went on there? <sighs> um, you said something about um, this. Is, this intrigues me about if you if you are on Twitter, then you can mute a person and they won't know it. And I understand because I think you can do that on Facebook. You can block them. Yes. Well, there's a difference between blocking and muting. That's the thing. Ah, what do I need to know? Um, blocking is you can't see them. They can't see you. Scorched earth. Um, muting is just their posts don't show up. So you don't see it in your feed. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. And I was... Um, it was it was kind of uh, freeing to me uh, to hear you talk about uh, that. Uh, let's see, you can limit your exposure and uh, you know purge and choose like this because uh, it's only five years that I've been on Facebook at all, and I didn't want to do it, but I went on to it because we were having a class reunion. Yeah. And all these people were on this, and uh, I was emailing. Some of the girls were still emailing, and I was calling them girls, which I wouldn't do now. But um, <laughs> uh, then they said, oh, so-and-so does this on Facebook, and that information, they're going to put that on Facebook. And I was like, oh, my God, you know, I'm never going to get to this reunion, and if I do, I won't know, you know, how to dress or what's going on. And so I got on it. And then I thought I had to, I had to interact with everything that came up, you know, because I, because I didn't know how it worked. Oh, and these people are putting on cooking recipes that I couldn't care about less. And, you know, others, I like seeing the grandkids. That was nice. Yeah. Uh, but, but then all this other stuff came, uh, just came out of nowhere. I don't care about golf. I don't do it. And, and you know, I don't care to have a list of play of places good places where they live and i didn't realize how i could get out of that and you know so what? i got out of it by basically not clicking onto it for weeks at a time <laughs> yeah so i wasn't going to talk about it um but we got time and you have the want you told me then that you can block and i said ah but then okay. now I see that that's a little bit different. So if I ever get on Twitter, I ha it's, it's going to work a little differently. Yeah, I mean, but it's the same concept. You can still, um, I don't think they call it muting on Facebook. It, it's notifications. You don't get their notifications, so it, you don't see it in your feed. So, but it's the same thing as muting. It's just called something different. So I'm going to tell you my my Facebook, the, the way I use Facebook is weird. So um, I'll just break it down for you if that if you think it'll be helpful. Okay. Cool. Um, so <laughs> notifications, like I already uh, talked about that, that you can turn off the notifications, you can do that for pages, groups, and people. So like with your um, uh, reunion group if you didn't want to keep seeing stuff like maybe now if they have a group and there's still people posting you don't have to see that all the time you can opt in um, you know choose your exposure um, and like sometimes there's a lot of pressure on these things and it's not very it, it's not very social on social positively social um, like somebody will you know have you like a page for their business so you can, uh, if somebody is like, you know, like my it's Etsy shop on there, then what you can do is uh, mute their page. And then they still have, uh, you know, the numbers, because a lot of this is just vanity metrics, but they still see that you're a member and uh, you don't have to be bothered. <laughs> So that's one of the things you can do. Um, you, again, the subtweets, if people are writing about stuff and they don't tag you in it, then they might think you're ignoring them. That a lot of people are just, a, you know, really into themselves, so that might not be a thing, but it's just a warning to put out there. Um, so here's the Amber P. Knight way of using Twitter. I mean, Facebook. First of all, I had three. One was 
my high school, <laughs> like everybody else, uh, one was my high school slash college one. Uh, one was my uh, family one. So, uh, you know, and the third one is the one I still have. And it was some of my new internet friends. So it was like all people that I met like post 2012. And so that's the one I still am on and use in a very weird way. And just as a quick thing, it's so funny. The one that was for family, I mean, like, you know, I'm bundled up. I have on a hat, you know, just everything is very modest and stuff. And on my personal one, I'm like in tight outfits and thirst traps and stuff. And it's like, it is a very different world on that one but I got rid of both of those and I just have one and the reason I have it is just like you were saying with the reunion thing I um stay on for groups but these are not groups that I have to be a part of I got rid of all the groups that I had to be a part of and now I only I unfriended everyone so I have no friends on Facebook technically and I'm a member of like five groups and they're all positive groups that I like because there's two things when it comes to you know com online and offline it can be aspirational and inspirational types of relationships and also things that are kind of like trauma bonding or just things that are you know going to make you like feel envious and stuff like that versus things that are going to make you feel more hopeful. So like, um, I have a medical condition and I'm in a group about that, but it's very positive. It's very fun. It's not a bad medical thing. Anyhow. So, um, so there's that I am in something about public speaking. I have one about fitness. I have one with a group of friends that are really fun and positive and we have fun events in person and on zoom. And so I joined for that reason. And that's the only reason I'm there is just for the groups that I have offered opted into and when I'm done with a group I am done they are dead to me I'm gone and I just I just can't be bothered I really can't so um I I just um and there's a couple things that you can do so one is just get out of there just just jet or you can make a new one if you wanted to do a plan like mine with an with an email that no one uses because people can find you on um facebook via your email or your phone number if that's what you connect with so you can you can unfriend everybody but people will know if you unfriend somebody they will know and if they see that you are still on twitter they're not going to know unless they really search that you unfriended everybody so i'm taking a chance i just stopped caring I just really, my wellness is way more important than somebody, you know, wanting me to know about when their cookouts are. I'm done. Uh, so uh, you can join, if you do want to do like the thing I said, you can join with a email that no one knows about and do it that way. Um, or just, you know, undo everything. And the same thing with social issues and stuff like that. Just, it's, it's rough. It's, it's hard in these streets. Um, but yeah, there could be charities, social issues, events, um, tragedies, just things that you don't want to deal with. With, with any of this social media, I highly suggest um, purge where you need to purge. Um, so yeah, so that's, my, that's how I use Facebook. It's a very weird way to use it, but yeah, what are you going to do? Um, yeah. Yeah, it sounds uh, uh, freeing to to you know because otherwise i think it's very easy with uh with facebook or something especially if some <laughs> you get a notice that that the computer generated but you don't realize it at first you have not responded to this for five days or, or you know something like that or so and so sent you a request a friend request and you haven't responded for 24 hours and I'm looking at that saying, I, have been, I haven't been on for 24 hours. And it, it feels stressful. Yeah, you know, it it's a whole stressful. thing. And then, then, because I felt I had to do something about it, then I get my sister on the phone and say, do you remember so-and-so from, from our grammar school? Well, there's a friend request there. Do you know what that person's doing now or why they might be friending me? <laughs> I'm trying to, like, get the backstory. And it becomes a whole detective thing uh, instead of um, what you're saying is just, you know, just give it up. Unless that's, like I said, there's consequences sometimes. And if 
those consequences outweigh just like, eh, I just won't go on very much or I'll just kind of do the minimum. That might be less stressful. I'm, who am I to say? You know what I mean? For, for, like I said, for me, it is not more stressful. Um, but yeah, I recognize it's different for everybody. Okay. And you're right. Uh, on a good day, you'd probably click on it. <laughs> and on a bad day, <laughs> get out of my face. <laughs> Let me tell you, I, you know, cat, let me tell you, just when you think it's safe to get in the water, I still get caught up. The thing that I can't figure out how to get around is that um, Facebook has those video notifications and they are always bummers. Like, so, like every now and then there'll be something cute, but it's usually just such bummers. And I don't know how to turn off those notifications to, to, to not see those. But, uh, but other than that, you know, I've, I've found a way to navigate. And sometimes the way I navigate is just not going there. And, you know, part of me is like, you know, even though I'm talking about all this stuff, I haven't left. You know what I mean? I still have Instagram, which I don't go on very much. Um, haven't gone on at all recently. I still have Twitter, which I haven't gone on recently. Um, but, you know, there are other, there's other things you can do. So, so yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Oh, meetup. Do you think you'd go to a meetup? I decided I uh, was too old for that. <laughs> Honey. <laughs> Honey. When I tell you, why don't you trust me after the kayak situation? I thought we had moved beyond this. No, no. I met one person who constantly talked about this meetup thing, which I had never heard about. And um, uh, be because we were uh, uh, attending, uh, what were we? Oh, we were at a, a gym, okay? And for some reason, uh, we didn't plan to be there together, but it was co coincidental. And then she'd say, I'm going to this meetup in Boston. You want to come along? And then, and uh, you know, it never occurred to, I didn't know what it was. So of course I said, oh, I have to do such and such. And then uh, she kept going and she went to like five or six of these a week. And I, I said to myself, what is this thing? And then, I don't know. I asked her who, who, who shows up at these? And it did sound like people were more in their forties or fifties or thirties, maybe thirties, forties, fifties. And so that's too young for me. <laughs> However, um, it sounds like an effort. What do you mean? Well, um, after, well, maybe because we were meeting at the gym, because after you go to the gym and you work out and then, you, you know, you get scrubbed up and everything and then to go on to another whole thing to go out again that just seemed like uh, <laughs> that was you know I'm gonna go home and veg out <laughs> exactly exactly and something I realized like I'm a homebody it takes me a lot to have cabin fever and I do some work from home and stuff like that before all this and but it's only been recently that I've really been like I need to be around humans um but uh I first of all no pressure. Um, I'm just, you know, putting stuff out there. But um, uh, yeah, it's just, again, to speak to the possibilities. That is, that is my aim with stuff. Um, 60 and greater. Hold on. Just because I want to renew your faith in me. Um, 60 and greater. Anyone joining who's interested in meeting and doing things with people over 60, for over uh, cultural events, theater, educational events, blah, 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 blah. Um, 60 plus West Newton Cinema Club. When I say they get granular. Wow. Um, but, but, but yeah, so they're, they're stuff. Aha, uh -huh. home by 10 improv for middle age at heart. <laughs> I've been to that and there's more than middle age. Boston single, single professionals, 40, 50, 60s. So there's stuff. I I don't I'm not invested in meetup.com or anything. I don't get anything out of it. My whole thing is even if people don't use the the stuff that I mention to know that it's there. 
Okay. That is my only thing. Okay, that's good. And so it's not all wine tasting. No, no. You gonna make me look up kayaks? See now I gotta look up kayaks. <laughs> In this age, that's probably one of the more like safe things to do meeting up is you can definitely keep six feet distance in a kayak. So. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. And you can't go to the gym now, so you get a little exercise paddling. That's right. Yeah. Have you do? I, I did know that the uh, the folks in the Neponset River, the Neponset River uh, watershed, uh, there's a Neponset River group that was giving away free. A guide to all the different places you can put in. I don't know if you've ever paddled over there. But, no, uh, I've, I've done just uh, be, because I, I have some uh, some physical limitations. Okay. I've done just a little. Uh, that's in a very uh, placid mm -hmm. water kind of situation. Do you but rent when you go kayaking, or do you have your own? Uh, no, I'm actually with a town uh, okay. recreation thing. It's just for a few weeks in the oh, summer, okay. mm -hmm. but you can be out there with the egrets and uh, awesome. and the and the ducks. And you can, if you can go like this time of the year, you can go later, and mm -hmm. you can watch them when they come in for feeding. Uh, and they have the little ducklings with them and uh, everything. And I find that thirty minutes of that just erases all kinds of stuff out of your head. You know, and then and then because you're doing something physical, you you feel uh, tired and can relax afterwards. So I I really think it's great. Yeah, and there's like a billion of them. <laughs> I'm so sorry. yeah, but yeah, very cool. So it's there, and you can always spread the good word of the gospel of some of these things. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. So, uh, do you? Uh, I've never heard of this Compass group. Mm -hmm. Compass, uh, yeah, it's part of NAMI. Okay, and so there is a local. There's a local number that I'm seeing, and they. Um, I got, I was writing really fast while you were talking. So they have things like legal help, or is um, it? They they're a resource to help you find stuff. So you, they won't, they don't have like an in-house lawyer you can go to, but like if you're having issues with housing court or something, they can let you know about resources for that or like what resources other places have. Like they're good at referrals and stuff. I've called them tons of times. I am super self-advocate. Like that is something that I've had going for me is that I knew how to speak up and ask for things. I've learned about all sorts of resources and stuff because I ask. And there, sometimes there's help that I didn't even know was a thing. Um, so, uh, so yeah, they, they know about a lot of things. If you have, if you have family members who, um, are dealing with mental health issues, there are groups just for family members. So there's, there's something for everyone. And they're, uh, they're not affiliated with a, a hospital or sorry, they're, uh... no, no, okay. they're just an advocacy group. Okay. Rita, do you live in Quincy? I do. Have you, do you know Richard DePina? Have you ever met him? That name is very familiar. Richard uh, comes to the library. Well, when we were open, he was in the library on a very regular basis. He works for Elliott Community Services. You may have met his dog, Lucy, a sweetest little thing ever, a little Bijan Frise that goes everywhere with him. Um, Richard uh, was doing, we had a weekly Pathways to Wellbeing program, and he he is um, he's a peer navigator that helps people. He's, he's also you know, lived with mental health challenges um, and figured out how to you know, put his life uh, you know, together around those challenges and, um, and helps people navigate uh, all the different resources that are available to us in Quincy. So I would be happy to introduce you to Richard if there's other things that you're looking for and you're looking for uh, somebody who can help you just kind of find your way through and, well, and figure out what the best local resources are. He's, he knows so much. It's awesome. I was, I was kind of interested because uh, I've been in a, a, a group for a specific uh, issue, and uh, I know uh, in one of the people in that group was sort of coming apart as we were as we were having the group because of of the housing the housing thing was coming apart the yeah. uh, the COVID thing was coming into the housing the whole and you know and uh, she didn't seem to have any resources. And no one mentioned this. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah it does really. None of us seem to know that. So uh, this was something uh, that I was definitely pass along. Because Please help me, you know, the more I can do to connect people with Richard, uh, he works with people, his office is out of Father Bill's, um, because that's where LA partners with, because there's a lot of folks that are experiencing homelessness that obviously have a lot of challenges and, and need help navigating the system. Um, but he, you know, we work closely with his fire and the folks that, you know, the people used to be South Shore Mental Health. Um, and there's a lot of just different resources. There are a lot of recovery houses for people are going for those kinds of issues. Um, Folks over at QCAP, uh, community, you know, the Clinton yeah. Community Action Program. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different resources around, but most folks who are doing this work are overworked and don't have enough time to tell people about what they're doing. So it's it's kind of this. It's, it's there's we know that there's people who need help, but helping you know make sure people are aware of where they can get help right now. It, it's a constant struggle. The folks at Interfaith Social Services. I mean, there, there's a lot of local people that are doing a lot of good work. But one of the things we're really trying to do at the library is help make those connections with folks. So please, I, I just put my email in a chat. Um, shoot me an email. I'm happy to introduce you to folks and do whatever I can to help out. So okay, okay. So this and if you forget, if you lose that, you can find me easily. I'm, it's Clayton Cheever. Look for me on the library website. I'm pretty easy to track down. So oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't right. want to tie up all of your. Um, the other person can't really text or anything, right? Yeah, he, he dropped he actually, out. Yeah, he signed out a little bit ago. He got oh, where he was okay. going and, and uh, had to sign out. So okay. Yeah, he he was communicating with me. He really appreciated it and really appreciated the helpful stuff. So thank okay. you, Amber. He he sent his 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 his, yeah. his 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 appreciation. So thank you. Rock on. Yeah. Well, Ooh, I never yeah. dreamed I'd have a private <laughs> consultation. <laughs> Well, you're helping everybody because we did record this and we're going to put it online. So um, if you want to go back and see it later and get a reminder, you know, you said you were taking a whole bunch of notes. Um, I will put out a note um, on our Facebook page and on um, we'll put this on YouTube eventually so we can share it with more people. So I, I really appreciate your help um, making this, you know, relevant to an individual so people can see that there are, you know, you know, as Amber was saying, whatever you're interested in. There are, there are other people, you know, you'll find it on the internet. There, there's somebody else has thought of it already, and there's a group of people that are talking about it, of anything. I mean, it's it can be frightening sometimes when you realize, like, okay, I thought that was a great idea. Nope, here is like a thousand other people who thought of the same thing. But it's also awesome because when you're ready and, and, and there's a community, there, there's, there's a community for that that can be supportive. And, um, as long as we realize that the, the one thing that I have to keep in mind, and as you were talking, Amber, I just have to share, like, all these tools we're talking about, we get for free, which means that, you know, they're actually, they're marketing something. These are marketing companies. Yeah. What they're doing is marketing us. So when we give them our time, we have to realize that we have very, our time is very precious and we can get great things from them, but we owe them nothing. You know, we can take whatever we want because they are, the very fact that we're there, they're, they're deriving value from us. So let's be careful what we give them and make sure that we employ them for us. We're getting it for free, but we don't have to give ourselves away for free. We, we, mm. we should protect ourselves. So There you go. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Amber, thank you so much. It's been delightful. Oh, um, it's been fun.